Hello and welcome back to my adventures as an audio engineer using the M1 MacBook Air. Today I will be diving into Studio One version 4, and I want to let you guys know that I tried to dive into Studio One version 5, but it crashes. A lot. Also, I was not able to activate my copy of Studio One version 5. For some reason, there seems to be a bug with the activation of it. So if you're a Studio One version 5 user, do not upgrade to these M1 Macs. Yet. Now, I feel like Personas is going to be pretty quick with an update. They generally seem to be really good about updating and staying up with the times, so I imagine there will be an update to Studio One version 5 in the near future. However, that time is not now. So if you're a huge Studio One fan, do not get them, especially if you use McDSP plugins, as we will be finding out shortly. So in my testing, I did some tracking in Studio One version 4, was able to track guitar, no problem whatsoever. Hardware buffer size was set down to 64 milliseconds, which is twice as fast as Pro Tools was, if you guys remember that from my last video. And then I went in and was trying to play around with some plugins. I was able to use the Personas plugins just fine. And then as soon as I threw the Revolver plugin on, it completely crashed, and now I can't even open the session at all. So that was a fun little experiment, and as we've found out, it didn't work at all. So anyway, I'm just going to show you guys some of the footage from Studio One version 4, and I might splice in some of my footage from Studio One version 5 at the very end. So anyway, hope you guys like it, and if you find these videos helpful, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all of my reviews of the MacBook Air with M1. So we are going to do 64 samples. I've just created a brand new session. I have not tried tracking in Studio One with Big Sur on the M1 yet, so let's just play around with this, shall we? Okay, so now with that guitar track, we are going to go in here and let's just add some plugins just to see how this goes. Okay, so we're just gonna add a uh, Personas compressor to this thing just to make it easy. Let's just go acoustic guitar one, let's go. Let's just do that. Okay, and let's see guys. Sure, that's good enough for now. All right, next we're gonna throw in a room reverb. Um, let me throw in this pedal board here, because I kind of wanted to see. Let's throw in a delay. I kind of want to throw in like a 30 second. Maybe a 16th. Just for fun, I'm going to try Revolver. This. So I'm going to go over to some DSP, so drop that in there. Alright, so there is the starting up. Um, and as you saw, we got this little error message. Okay, so I'm going to try this again. What you guys were not able to see just then is that I I just had Studio One completely crash on me because I tried to throw Revolver in here. So what we're gonna do there is let's just save that project. Open up the mix window here, effects. All right, let's try this again. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw on 
I try throwing on this version of Revolver. Maybe that one works better. I tried, I have two different versions of Revolver on here. All of my McDSP plugins are on here as uh, VST and whatever the other one is. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Anyway, so I'm gonna try and add some Revolver. Okay, what's fun about the this version is there is no presets. All right, never mind. So let's just go ahead and get rid of that one, remove. So we're gonna drop this version in there, okay? And we're gonna bring that up, lower down the sound. Okay, let's save. We're gonna go to this one, the first one in the churches and cathedrals preset is one of my favorite reverbs that Personas has. And here you can see the, the contrast is a little weird in the graphics in here. It, Definitely looks different than it does when I use it in Pro Tools, so I'm not sure what's going on there. The interface is definitely not. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, so as we are seeing, Studio One does not like Revolver, so there we go. Okay, so while Studio One is booting up here for the first time, this is version five. I don't know if you can see, but up there in the corner, it is saying Studio One demo. I do own Studio One version five. And if I go here to the website, I go here to my account. Here you can see Michael's MacBook Air activated November 25th. That is today, as you see there. Activated, but the program would not let me activate it. So that's a weird bug. Also, this was the same with Studio One version four. When I opened it for the first time and it does the plugin scanner, it takes a very long time. However, as you saw in the Studio One version four, it launches incredibly fast once it's already finished with the plugin scanner. So it's just this initial boot up takes a very, very, very long time. Uh, I thought it was broken at first because it hangs on this one, but hopefully I will get to be doing a Studio One version five uh, demo for you on the uh, MacBook Air. All right, guys, now diving back into the startup process. As I expected, it is now several minutes later, and as you can see, it is actually scanning some plugins again. I don't know what it is about Studio One and the boot up process on these M1 chips, but it is a very, very long startup process. So hopefully the next time I launch this, it will actually be fast. And hopefully I can also get this program activated. That would be quite nice. You know, seeing as that I do pay for this uh, program, it would be nice to be able to activate it. It does work perfectly fine on my Mac Pro, which is Intel based. So hopefully it's just some weird little bug with the M1 and that they can get it fixed soon. I really hope Personas jumps on the ARM bandwagon soon so I can fully use Studio One with this new MacBook Air because I really do love this computer and I think so far almost everything I've done on it runs incredibly smoothly and so Studio One seems to be my one sticking point. Okay, so the plugin scanner is just finishing up here and here we will see the actual initial boot up of Studio One version 5. And this is version 5.1.1. Cool, all right, so here we go. Okay, so now to start out with, I am having to install all the additional plugins and all that, which shouldn't take too much longer. Let's see if I can activate these things, shall we? Hmm, some items failed to activate. <laughs> of course they did. Okay, so for now, I'm just gonna close that. Yeah, um, do you want to restart Studio One now? No, please not. So now I am going to open up the session that we started earlier in this video in Studio One version four. It is loading Revolver and okay. Okay, so far so good. As you can see here, we still have the same issue. Like the graphics on this thing are not quite what they should be. Anyway, we're just gonna close that and let's just try playing it. Okay, so far so good here. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go, oh, yep. So, um, yep, that's, uh, yep, that's pretty much what I expected. So, uh, <clears throat> 
All right, so there you have it. Studio One version four and five are definitely not optimized and Studio One version four seems to work okay if you're only using Personas plugins. I might test it out with some Waves stuff as well and see how that goes. But I would say if you're using Studio One for now, I would avoid the M1 chips and just stick with your Intel-based machines because right now, unfortunately, Studio One is not at all working. So anyway, tomorrow I plan on diving back into Pro Tools and maybe even playing around with Logic a little bit. And be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified as soon as I upload that video. So anyway, on that note, have a great Thanksgiving and I will see you in the next one.